Bless the Lord this morning. All these smiling faces. Awesome men's breakfast this morning. Men, if you missed it, you missed a blessing. Awesome message this morning. Are you standing with Christ? That's a question we should ask daily. Are you standing with Christ? Are you there with him or are you off doing your own thing? That's something. That's something there. I got a few announcements on go before we get started. December the 21st, ladies' Christmas party, 6.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Bring finger foods, $20 gift or less for the game and secret sister gift. Uh, also, the 21st, we, uh, well, Brother Jarvis, he, he kind of mentioned it. But, men, if you want to come out, we all want to get together and we're going to go eat somewhere. We don't know where. We're just going to get together and go eat. So, men, if y'all want to come out while the ladies is at their meeting, we'll go out and we'll eat, do a little fellowshipping, have our own little men's meeting deal. Amen. We, we had started that back, and then the COVID kind of knocked us out of it. And uh, maybe we'll get that back started up. Also, uh, feed my sheep December the 19th. Be in prayer for that ministry that's going forward. Also, if you want to assist in that, get with Brother Pee Wee or Sister Cherie. They'd be more than glad for the help, I'm sure. It, it, it's really, it can get overwhelming with no help, I'm sure. You, they, they get together, they cook, they fix plates, they take it out, share the love of God, and give them a hot meal. You can't beat that. Amen. And maybe, just maybe, that'll touch somebody's life. Amen. If y'all would stand with me, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come to you, Lord, thankful for this day, Lord. Thankful for this opportunity to gather together in your house, Father. I pray, Lord, that you just come in, Father, and have your way today in this service, Father. I pray, Lord, that you open our hearts to worship you as only you can do, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you this message, God, you open our ears to hear and our hearts to receive it, Father God. And I pray that I pray that you give us the wisdom to apply the message today to our life, God. In Jesus' name, and the church said, amen. Let 
This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. And in the valley, I know that you're with me. And surely your goodness and mercy follow me. So 
all my weapons are praise and thanksgiving. And this is how I fight my battles. And I believe you've overcome and I will lift my song up. Praise for what you've done. And this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. Songs and even fades for you. My flesh cry out for the living God, for the living God. And incline your ear with trembling and tears. I'm yearning. To the throne of grace To seek your face I'm burning Longing for you And I need you I need you Nothing, no place No one else will do I need you I need you you satisfy the longing inside my soul longs and even fades for you my heart and my flesh Cry out for the living God, for the living God. Incline your ear with trembling and tears, I'm yearning. To the throne of grace, to seek your face, I'm burning, longing for you. And I need you, I need you. Nothing, no place, no one else will do. I need you, 
Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Are you glad to be in the house of God? Amen. I can tell you for a truth, I'm glad to be in the house of God. Got a little break, went away for a few days, four days up in the mountains. Man, I enjoyed the relaxation and realizing how old I am really walking up them hills. Glory to God, I've got to lose some weight. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. But God is good. I like I love I love the song choices and what took place in the song before when you feel like you're surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Though it looks like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you. When you think about that, when I think about the pandemic, I said something last week that was very profound. A lot of times people think when I preach, I just preach to them, but I preach to us. As a body, I preach to us as a union. I preach to us as a body of Christ. And I preach to me more than I preach to anybody. Because God always hits me, Sister Margaret. And he spoke something to me very plain when he spoke it to me at my computer when he said that people have been dead. Now, I'm not talking about, I thank God no one's died physically. But spiritually, we've been dead. He, he, he let me know. He revealed it to me. He said, you, you quoted it correctly but you you left out or you said they were dead way before the pandemic he said y'all we in other words i was dead before the pandemic spiritually we get into a place to where you you know we're numb or whatever you want to call it but a lot of times we we want to preach but when we preach we always use they but in reality when i preach it's always we i may not use it in that term but it hits me god he let me know that the pandemic just brought out some things to reveal some things to show some things when he spoke to me it's been a long time ago that 2020 was going to be a year of vision before i even knew there was going to be a pandemic it's every year at the beginning of the year he always speaks something in my spirit but one thing that he spoke to me that I know that we're going to have 2020, we're going to have that vision. And then he's given us a vision. Now it's up to us to wake up and open up our eyes that we were asleep. We were, we were dead spiritually, not physically. And thank God no one's died physically that, that I know of. And there's been some people that I, I know of, but as far as our immediate family or our body family, but I, I think about it spiritually. It's high time that the church awake. 
It's high time that the church come out of sleep. If there was ever a time for us to be the church and be the church of the living God is today, because now people are watching, you know, and, and you know, when you, when you look in 2020 and God opens your eyes and God says, you know, where, where you failed was you've always depended on yourself. And we've been there. You know, I said it when my son died, I, I always fix things. I can always get through things. I can always, you know, I got a remedy. I can take care of this. But when he died, there wasn't nothing I do. Well, then in the pandemic, you know, you sort of get a little laxy daisy or whatever you want to call, or you get into a little place of sleep, or you get into a place of spiritual deadness to where the church as a whole, we find ourselves sometimes. And then, you know, a pandemic comes up and God says, you're not exempt. And then when you get sick, it's like God said, I'm trying to show you something that spiritually you have to awake. And see where you are spiritually. And sometimes you got to go through things to realize who you really got to trust in. And that's the title of the message would be learn to trust God and not men. We put our trust in men a lot. Learn to trust God and not men. And I, I'm going to try my best not to be long, but you know how I am. Uh, Brother Josh preached the men's breakfast this morning. I like what he said. He said he preached one night, and this little guy come running up to him and said, out of all the preachers in this church, you're my favorite. And he was like, man, I thank you for that. He said, because all the rest of them preach about an hour. You don't preach about five, ten minutes. He said, you my favorite preacher. I thought, man, I ain't nobody's favorite preacher. <laughs> What you laughing about, Brother John? You with me. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, it's like this. It's hard to prepare and read and study and pray. And then God puts something in your heart and things build up. And then to get it out in just five minutes. And Brother Peter always said, if you'll quit meddling and saying you're closing, you'd, you'd already be done. But, you know, it's just to share. I'm telling you, I, I love the Lord. I love this church. I love the body of Christ. And I love people in general. I love our community. And I think that this out of the pandemic, out of one of the biggest things is it's time to reach the community. Amen. It's, it's time. You know, sometimes things have come. That's what he talked about this morning, about things hitting just to get you to look. And I said, man, that's a lot of what I'm preaching this morning. If I can, I get scattered brained a lot. Amen. That was your opportunity. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Man, went and had a great vacation sort of like four day vacation where it was with brother Jarvis, sister Carrie, Cry, and Jacob and Jack Jackie and we just man we just had a good time and rest and what what little bit they let me rest they like to go a little more and I like to go but that's when you know you're getting old amen but it was a good time and I thank God I was looking at Jacob's necklace I asked him what that was I said if I, I guess if I was going to get a necklace that'd be something I'd get and wear it's the names of God he said I got them on my heart and I said, man, that's good because not only are they in our heart, but they're on our heart. Amen. The song went right along with it. Though you think you're surrounded, you are surrounded, but we're surrounded by him. We're took care of. I can't say none of these names. I was thinking of Jarvis when I was reading this one. Shanika rib or whatever. I said, he'll sneak a rib if you don't watch him. He's a, he's a rib guy. Everywhere he eat on rib, rib, sneak a rib. I can't say his name, but I, I want to start out today, and I really went back to reference this out of Isaiah, and Isaiah tells the story about the king of Assyria that went around conquering and just taking over Israel, and taking over Judah, and just he was just conquering and wiping out and killing their most, and it gets down to Hezekiah, or I, I, no, not Hezekiah, yeah. I got to watch my name. I get mixed up. But in 17, 39 through 41, I'll read it. It's, it's, the Lord gives us uh, a glimpse at what we should trust. Trust God and not men. It says, But the Lord your God you shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of your enemies. Did you hear that? If you trust the Lord your God, he's the one that will deliver you out of the hand of of your enemies, howbeit they did not hearken, but they did after their former manners. In other words, you know, while I was telling you about what Josh preached this morning, went right along with it, is when when trials and tribulations and troubles come, we always go back to what we know and what we've always done, and that's that's what he used about Peter. One of my favorite messages that I preached was about 
Peter going back to what he knew and the rest of them going back with him. People said, well, they weren't backslid. You find me naked on a boat with a bunch of men fishing, you can bet I'm backslid and drunk. Amen? But he goes back to what he, he knew, and that's what we do, and this is what they did. They went back to their former manners. So these nations feared the Lord and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children. So did their fathers. So do they unto this day. In other words, people bowing down. Sean used it in Sunday school about the arenas and the and you know how they they killed for that was their entertainment. Now it's football and baseball and basketball and all the things that we put in an arena and that we watch. And we go back to them former things. You know, we don't watch it. You go through a pandemic and you get to where you got to stay in the house and all you'll do is is be entertained. And God's given us an opportunity to get on our face. God's allowed this to happen, not to just a nation, but the world, to get us on our face, to wake us up spiritually. And it's high time that the church do wake up. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, God. Lord, I repent as a pastor. I repent as a Christian as a whole. I just pray, God, that you intervene, touch our lives, minister to us from within to without. God, that we become spiritually awoken in this last days, God, the last hours, that I believe that for that we'll be an influence, that God will be a light, will be a witness, and God, that souls will be one to the kingdom of God in such an hour as we live in. God, touch the hearts and lives of your children. Lord, may we learn to trust in you and not men. God, not, not focus on me, not focus on any of the ministers here, or any of the teachers here, but focus on you. Trust on you, God. Study the Word. Know the Word. Live the Word. Walk the Word. Breathe the Word. Be the Word to this lost and dying world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Y'all have to bear with me. The COVID didn't take me out, but I'll tell you, I've, I've had some weeks. I've had some times that I'm having trouble breathing. I said, I can still feel the effects of it, even though I've been clean for a month. I still feel, you know, the attacks of it. And I said, you know, you can get like what I'm preaching this morning. And that's why I'm not concerned about it. I'm not worried about it for myself. I am for other people as a pastor. I'd hate to see somebody sick, somebody go through something, somebody hurt or somebody deal with something. But as for myself, Brother Jarvis, I have learned to trust God. I've learned to put my hope in God, my faith in God, my trust in God. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. And this is going to be, you got to be careful because people say, look out, you know, and then you, you die in, in six months from something. They'll say, well, he didn't trust in God. Don't ain't got nothing to do with that. My trust is fully in God. However, God chooses to take me out of here. Did you know Corona can't take me out unless God says it's time for me to go. You, you know, someone said, well, you got to use common sense. I ain't going to run jump in front of a semi-truck. I'm going to trust God. And I'm trusting God in everything that I do. One thing that I know, that for Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, to come into effect, it'll have to get to where there'll be pandemics or sickness or disease or governors or presidents or whatever, telling people you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. Or people still going to come and worship and serve God. But when they start putting limitations on it, say, you can't do it, and eventually, people will quit doing it and then then hebrews chapter uh, 10 verse 25 will come in effect someone says what it says not forsaking assembling yourselves together in the house of the lord as today is as you see other people doing we'll do we'll we'll compromise and i'm telling you something god ain't wanting church just lay down you know, you go through your time. If you need to quarantine, you do it. That's what I did. You just do what you got to do. But when it gets time, you get back right back to doing what you do. And that shirt, we get so fearful. I like the shirt. I read your shirt earlier. It says, together we are fearless. Together we are fearless. Why do you think this nation's in the mess it's in? Because a kingdom divided cannot stand. People say there's interference from outside. Well, my God, I know there's interference from outside. I know it's Russian. I know it's Chinese. I know whatever it is. Because the United States is the world power, and there's got to be division to fall. Because a kingdom divided cannot stand. A church divided ain't going to stand. A kingdom divided ain't going to stand. The only that's what happens to kingdoms. They get they get to where they think they can't fall, but when division comes, they're gonna fall. 
Yeah, there's interference. There's people from outside. There's no doubt about it. They'd love to be the world power. But right now, God's got us there. But listen, if you get to a place to where you're fearful of everything, I got a lot of reading, so I'm going to try not to, to just, and some of these names I can't say, you know, my wife said, listen, Jacob told me one time, you need to go back and listen to that so you can say that word. Everyone been around me, no, I'm barely say cat. Huh? Brother John had to look at how I said, learn to trust God. I had to, <laughs> I had the R and A wrong. He said, learn. <laughs> yeah. I said, you know how to spell fix that. Amen. I, I don't mind telling you that God took somebody didn't have enough sense to get out of the rain and used them in the kingdom of God and, and gave them some knowledge and understanding and said, use it in the kingdom of God. You know why he does that? You know why he gets somebody that, that, that most people would look at and say, I wouldn't listen to him. for now. You know why God does that? Because God says he gets all the glory and all the honor because God knows who I was outside of God. And most people that know me know how I was outside of God. So they said, I know that's God. Listen, because God gets all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. I've learned, and thank God I have, I've learned, I'm not fearing the things out there. I fear Him. I, I, I'm not serving an idol. I'm not serving a statue. I'm not serving. I'm serving the King of kings and Lord of lords. And that's, that's what took place with slaughtering people all over the place. And, and he decided, you know, we trust God. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going I'm to paraphrase a little. I got to paraphrase a lot of it because I'm actually coming through Isaiah. I'm coming through uh, Second Kings, and there's a lot on it and a lot to study. You need to just go back and just study it out. But, you know, Hezekiah was so worried about pleasing men and pleasing the army and staying safe that he took all the gold and all the silver that was in the house of God and shipped it as a, a present like a gift, even cut the gold off of the post and off of the door and sent it. He was doing whatever he could to try to be protected. So he finally did what he should have did at all. He went to Isaiah and said, hey, y'all." he sent messengers, said, y'all go to Isaiah. But listen to this right here. It says, then repish uh, whatever his name verse 28 of 18 i need to go ahead and, and move there 28 rep because uh, i can't say that name uh stood and cried with a loud voice in the jews language and spake saying hear the word of the great king the king of assyria now listen you, you might not think much of that but when you got a king that's done took over Samaria and took over city after city after village after kingdom after kingdom and wiped them out. Then a messenger comes to your gate where you're at. I, I was sitting there meditating about it, thinking about it. Think about if you're hearing and you have heard Corona's coming. Corona's in Florida. Corona's in uh, New York. But Corona wasn't really here. But it was just slipping in. And all of a sudden, oh, you know, you're watching the news. And like people say, you get discouraged watching it. And then you look and say, well, it's in IU. Well, it's in Ripley. Well, there's a few cases and boom. And it's just growing. It's taking over. That's the way it is with this king. He's just wiping them out. And they hear, well, he's down there in Tupelo. It's time to start getting a little nervous. He's in Baldwin. He took over Guntown, South Tiller, Tupelo. Now he's in Bowen. He's headed this way. And he's saying, listen, now we done took all the gold and the gold and silver out of the church, sent it to him as a love offering, whatever. Even cut the gold off the door, stop, you know, just doing whatever we can. You go back and read it. It's all up in there. Just trying to make sure we're okay. And he done overtook kingdom after kingdom. They trusted in their gods. They were praying to their gods. They were praying to images and graven images, what it said, but they were overtaking them. They were killing them and wiping out their gods and burning their gods and just doing whatever. But this, this is what takes place. Everyone's scared and everyone's running. Said, Serve the great king of Assyria. And that's what people do. We, we begin to worship different things. And all the way back in 17, he already said, don't worry about your enemies. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to take care of you, of your enemies. Don't you know if you get God, God wants you? <laughs> huh? If I hadn't got Corona, I may not be praying like I'm praying. If, if I hadn't dealt with it myself, I might look at, you know, I, I'm just saying, sometimes you get things happen to you to wake you up. The Bible's full of it. Things happen. David said that if I had not slipped, I'd, you know, I'd almost lost my way. My foot had slipped.
start looking at the enemy. We start looking at other things instead of God. We start trusting other things. You know, you know we, you, what we trust in, number one, is our finances. Let our finances get tight. Everyone's happy when everything's good. When the money's good, when the health is good, when everything's good. Smiling. You know, I had them play the song last week, If the Truth Be Told. Everything's okay, but it's not. If the truth be told, everyone's welcome, but they're not. If the truth be told, everything's fine, but it's not. And why can't the truth rarely told? Ain't that it? Well, when you're going through something, tell someone, man, I'm having a rough time. They ask you, man, how you doing? I'm doing great. Well, why would you want to lie about it? If someone called me, how you doing? Man, I'm terrible. I got the corona. I need a healing. I need a miracle. I didn't lie about it. I, I wasn't terrible down and out. And I, I, didn't, I didn't go through it like a lot of people, but I still had something on me, so I needed prayer. Well, how did it do you? It didn't do me good. Amen. I didn't like it. Didn't want it. I don't like being told to stay in the house. My wife will tell you, I'm not one to stay at home. If I get, Man, I stay at home on Saturday to study, read, and pray. I still got to get out and ride around. Still got to go out and just just move sometimes, just got to go. I, I'm not that person that just, just hunkers down or stays down or whatever. And I'm, you know, I preached it here after this, you know, after having it, I said, my skin just about going to have to fall off while I quit having church. <laughs> so, so they're going to get rid of the Corona and get leprosy in here. And then I stay at home because I, my, my skin nearly going to have to fall off before I cancel again. I mean, I'm, I'm going to try to obey the law the best of my ability, but the enemy is not going to stop me from worshiping God. The enemy is not going to stop me from serving God, even though I know the enemy's all around us. The biggest enemy you battle in fights in the church. Amen. You, you know, you if you don't watch it, see, because a kingdom divided can't stand, so we have to stand together. We are fearless. Together, we're powerful. Together, we're mighty in the kingdom of God. With God on our side, who should we fear? Nobody. But they want to tell you, you know, worship this or worship that or fear this or fear that. God's saying, keep your trust in God. Listen to this. It said, thus saith the king, let not Hezekiah deceive you, for, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of of his hand. So what's happening is you can't be delivered. Ain't that the way we are? We get to where when we take care of things ourselves, we think, I got this. I'm okay. I don't need nothing. But in reality, we need God. And that's what happened is Hezekiah was trusting in God. And Hezekiah was telling the people, don't worry about it. God's going to take care of you. And God's going to deliver you from all your enemies. He's using Cretch and I today, but it was Hezekiah then. And now I'm telling you, Sister Margaret, it's good to be safe and be careful, but don't never stop serving God. Don't never get to where you don't worship God. And this very thing's the thing that's causing the church to rise up and put her faith back and her confidence back in the God we serve. Not in the finances, not in the gold, not in the silver, not in the books, but in the Lamb of the living God. The king of kings, not, not the king. You know, it's like people think we need President Trump to save the United States or the world. No, we need Jesus. I like, I like President Trump. People get mad and say, you shouldn't be political. But when he's up there and someone says, you know, uh, something about being a savior, being whatever, he says, oh, no, he's it. He points to God. I don't know his status in life and where he is and if he's saved or what. I believe he is. I believe he's calling out on the Lord. I believe he's got some things to work out. He's a little rough around the edges. And guess what? I'm a little rough around the edges. Huh? Glory to God. Brother Richard said I wasn't even saved. I eat out of Jarvis's plate at the time. I, I, I try to rib. I, try, I thought Brother, brother uh, Richard throw a fit. Ain't no way he'd eat one of them real. <laughs> ain't nothing to that someone said you talking bad no i'm not talking bad i'm just talking about glory to god we gotta but you know when when you look and, and you put your trust in god not in a president not in congress not in senators this nation may fall i don't know i don't know what to tell you but a kingdom divided can't stand. It may fall, but I'm going to tell you who ain't going to fall. Jesus ain't. I'm going to tell you who's going to be standing at the end of the day. Christians are. I can tell you what's going to happen on the rapture. You think confusion's in the world now? Wait till the rapture of the church. There's going to be mass confusion. 
It'd be way worse than a pandemic. Glory to God. Listen to what I'm telling you this morning. It said, neither can Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying the Lord will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Now, when you, when you think about it and say, he's done took Tupelo, he's done took South Tilly, he's done took Guntown. So I'm, I'm bringing it to terms we can understand. He done took Baldwin. We're next. It's time that who do you trust in? Well, if you trust in yourself, guess what you're going to do? You're going to start giving gold and silver and whatever you can. But when you trust in God, so let him come on. Nothing he can do to us. When you get to that place where, you know, it's like cancer. Everyone's scared of cancer. Boy, if I get cancer. You, did you know this is a vehicle and how I travel on earth? The Holy Ghost abides inside. And however God chooses to pull me out of here, Sister Margaret, I'm ready to go home and be with Jesus. I'm not fearful of it. I'm not scared of it. I, I wasn't under a rock hiding from corona. When I got corona, I knew, all right, God, if you want me, here's your opportunity. God didn't even want me. He's like, no, we'll leave you down there to torment Jarvis for a while. <laughs> Let you torment Brother Butch for a while. Yeah. See, see, this is the key. When God's ready for me, I'm gone. You can't hold me here. You, you know, in the prayer of a righteous man of it much, you can, but I'm, I'm going to be like uh, Smith Wigglesworth's wife raised up and said, let me go. He, she done died once. And he went in there and prayed and called her name. She come back to life. And the second time, years down the road, she died again. He come in there and he started praying over and she come back to what it says. And she raised up and said, let me go. God's honoring his prayers. And she's like, let me go. You, you know, there, there, it's called rest. It's time. You know, I've done did what I've been called to do. Let me go be with the Lord. Amen. I'm tired of sitting down here hearing you preach. You're ready to leave. You preach the same message every Sunday. <laughs> you preach the same thing every week. I'm tired of hearing you. She's ready to go. That's why I'm using my wife. That's the way she'll be. I'll be in there. Lord, bring her back. She'll raise up. Let me alone. I've seen some things over there. It's a lot better than what I deal with here. And that's the way it is. Man, it's a lot better over there than it is here. Someone said, what's it going to be like? I can't tell you everything about it, but I can tell you this. It's going to be better than here. We think we eat in good groceries, you know, so everybody else thinks about money. I just think about the marriage side. I think about them groceries. You can tell I like eating. <laughs> Tired of eating this burnt food. Not at home. I just want to get out and eat. <laughs> it don't matter if it's burnt. She'll knock a rib over here. He'll sneak a rib anytime. It don't matter to him. <laughs> yeah, listen, he said... Out of the king of Assyria, he said, Hearken not unto Hezekiah, for this said the king of Assyria, Make an uh, agreement with me by, the, by presence. In other words, come on, bless you, you send it to me. Take care of me. You take care of me, I'm going to take care of you. And come out to me, and then eat ye every man of his own vine and every one of his own fig tree, and drink ye every one of the waters of his own censers, censers until I come and take away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards. Why well, won't go to a land that's sort of like the land of men? I'm already happy where I'm at. I ain't trusting in something outside of God. That's the way the devil does. Does God really love you? Why? Well, how, how come you got corona? I thought God was going to protect you. You, you. you don't watch it, your mind. Your mind will mess with you. That's why Paul said, cast down every vain imagination. Cast it down. So that ain't of God. I know that's not of God. And God does love us. God does take care of us. But the enemy paints a pretty picture. You know what he does? You know what most people does? Go back and read it. Go read Proverbs. Go read Psalms. All through there, people begin to look at the wicked, enjoying life, doing well, spending money, having money, having luxury, doing all kinds of things. And that's where David was like, man, they're doing good. I'm in here suffering. I'm in here dealing with this, dealing with that, dealing with Sister Margaret, dealing with Brother Justin. I got to deal with a bunch of men. Here they are just living it up, ain't doing it, not worrying about nothing, seems like. And people get to looking and then they get to thinking, man, that's, that's sort of carefree. I think I just, that's what happens. You know, we end up back in a mess. 
Now, I said it's a mess or it's a blast. You blessed with God. You're in a mess when you get in yourself. We get to where we trust ourselves, trust him or trust some other avenue. And I got to hurry. I got a clock, so I'm, I'm good. He said, until I come take care of you in the land, wine, vineyards, listen, vineyards. He said, lands and vineyards and, and, and a land of oil, olives and honey, and that you may live and not die. And hearken not to Hezekiah when he persuaded you, saying, the Lord will deliver us. When did, when did you stop putting your trust in God? How, how many knows that it's God that delivered you from the things you were bound by? Especially, you know, I, I bring it in our terms, like me, from, from being a drunk, from being on dope, or doing the things I was doing, from a, a pulsive gambler. I mean, doing it every day, you know, if I could. But I'm, I'm talking about being a pulsive. I'm talking about God is the one that delivers us from that. We forget about that. You know, when things is going good, we have a tendency to forget about that what we were and where we are. That's what the children of Israel was when they came out of Egypt. They were like, man, the melons were good. The onions were good. Everything was good. I wish I was still enslaved. And that's the way we are. We get, we get to thinking, you know, it's, it's pressure. I got to do this or I got to do that. Or, I, I, you know, I got so much that I got to keep up with. I, I remember what it was like just living carefree. You know, you don't understand this, but how you can take a, four or five pills, and then you're just numb. And you just forget about it. You know, I always say, though, I still got enough sense about me to remember. I always had to sober up, and there it was again. So what had to happen? I had to have some more of them. I had to have some more drink. It's the thing that kept me numb. Now I just go to the cross. It's the things that keep me sane. Listen, it's the things that keep me sane. He says... Has, hath any of the gods of the nations delivered at all his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? So what he's trying to do, he's trying to tell the people of uh, Judah there and the people of Israel, he's trying to tell them, and it's Judah right here with King Hezekiah, he's saying, look at what just took place. Well, I don't took Tupelo. I'm keeping Tupelo. It's not to go read the names. I, I didn't want to go back and read them names. I sure enough couldn't tell them. But I could keep it the worst we can understand. Go back and look at Tupelo. Go back and look at Guntown. Go back and look at South Tilly. Look at Baldwin. Look what took place. Did their God protect them? No, he didn't. Don't you listen to, to uh, Brother David because God can't deliver you. God can't take care of you. You need to trust in the king of Assyria. He done took over all the kingdoms and he's coming your way. You better bow down to him. Send presents to him. Go read it. Go read it for yourself. Go back and read every one of the chapters. Hezekiah took all the gold, all the silver, even cut it off the doorpost and sent to him. You think it's going to stop them? The enemy's still going to devour you. You can compromise. You sure can. You're still going to die. You're still going to lose. Ain't none of us going to escape dying. Ain't been but two that has never died physically on planet Earth. Even Jesus died on planet Earth. And them two's coming back in Revelations. And we'll die and be called up. Think about it. Why? Because they ain't tasted death. We ain't escaping it. Ain't no need in being fearful of it. It's going to knock at our door. It's coming. Don't bow down to it. Say, as for I die, it's when I die. Huh, I've thought about it, man. I'm just 57. I can't wait till I get 97. Someone said, why is that? I know it'll be close. I know I'll just have, you know, go. If I go eat and stay sitting down too long, I got to get up like this. But see, a a after I get over there, I'd just be like this. I'd be like jumping and shouting and praising. And man, glory to God. Spiritually, can you not see what God's doing? God's calling his church back to the altar. God's calling the church back to get on her knees. God's calling the church to pray again. I wonder how many pray. I'll tell you, I feel it. I feel it. I, I feel it. I can tell you about how much we're praying. You know, so I said, we're. I didn't say you. I said, we're. Ain't no prayers. Why? People come in bound and people leave bound. People come in on dope and leave on dope. People come in with addictions and leave with addictions. People come in sick and leave sick. 
It wasn't a man praying. It was a body praying. When Paul talked to them and they said, hey, you go ahead and take care of the tables and do whatever, we're going to pray and we're going to be in the Word. I belong spiritually. It took 2020 for God to say, open up your eyes. Oh, but we got so many people spiritual. If the truth be told, we got so many water walkers. I'm just being honest. If the truth be told, that's become one of my favorite songs. What you say? Sound like a kid song. Because I'm a kid. I love it. If the truth be told, boy, I got it all together. Why? Because you got good clothes? Because you got good shoes? Because your lights is paid? Because you got money? Because everything's took care of right now? Why, why are you? I'm talking about spiritually where are we at? Where are we at spiritually? I ain't talking about physically. I ain't talking about financially. I'm, not talking about, I'm talking about where are we at? How many of us, and they record it, and it's, it's not the words just playing. You got to go dig it up and look at commentaries and look at history that James's knees had calluses on them because they drug him across the rocks. No, because he prayed earnestly to the Lord. He spent time on his knees. My knees bother me, but it's not because I'm on too much. It's because I'm fat. Truth be told, while we're being truthful, when the church gets to where she belongs, we'll pray for people that'll be healed instantly. People will be delivered instantly. People will it, I, you tell them. This is why they woke out miserable. They come in and say how miserable we are. Hey, nothing he ain't going to tell you. But I, man, I'll tell you long. We, we are the church of the living. You know, we're, we're healed. We're blessed. We're saved. We're, we're okay. We're good. Everything's good. But we some of the frowningest people. We're not happy about nothing. Brother Sean, blow people's mind for me to tell them I am thankful that I got corona because it helped me open my eyes to some things I needed to see that I wasn't seeing that I wasn't looking at I was spiritually dead I was spiritually dying I didn't pray like I used to pray. I didn't do the things I used to do. I done got to a place to where I got uh Numb, if you would say, I understand we say you got dull of hearing. Y'all dull of hearing, you know why? You hear the same preacher preach the same message. The message brother Josh preached this morning, I preached a million times about Peter. I preached it a million times. When people backslide, they go back to doing what they always done. And people just look at me like a calf looking at a new gate. Someone else can say it and they throw cheers. Because we get dull here. We, we, you got a spiritual leader. This, when I look around and everybody's sad, I ain't got no choice but to be sad. I go home sad. It's like, what's wrong with you? I don't know. Well, you don't feel good? No. You ain't happy? No. You hungry? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm just being honest. See, that's good right there. That smile. That's what's about. We come out of darkness into his marvelous light. We got something to be happy about. If I'm sick, I should be happy. If I'm healed, I should be happy. If I'm broke, I should be happy. And if I got abundance, I should be happy. You know, I got I, I, you can believe this or not. I got to where I ask people. If people's in a bind. I find out if they tithe. If they tithe, I do not mind helping you. I'll help you out of my own pocket. I'll borrow it if I have to. I'll help you some way or another. But if they ain't, their hands, they tied God's hands, and they want you to bless what's cursed, can't do it. I have to pull back. 
And someone said, boy, that's sort of, well, God tells me it don't matter every time I do whatever God tells me, but I'm just saying for the, for as a whole, if I find out, man, that's the time they struggle. Glory to God. I'll go get money from Jarvis. I'll, I'll find some money. He'll have to beg carry, but we'll get it. <laughs> Amen. Hath any gods of the nations delivered out of the hand of the king of Syria? Where are the gods of Hamath? This, this is some of the gods of Hamath and of Arapath. Where are the gods of Sephardim, whatever, Hannah and Ivan? Have they delivered Samaria out of the hand, out of my hand? This is what the king sent the message. Who are they among all the gods of the countries and have delivered their country out of my hand? That the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? Now I done got to where I got home. Ain't, ain't that it? I'm getting really close. This is what happened. Hezekiah hears about what all is going on. He, no, you can see what's going on. You know what's going on. And then all of a sudden it lands at his 19, chapter 19, verse 1 says, And it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it that he rent his clothes and covered himself in sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. That's what I want to know about us. Do we got to wait for something to happen? To come into the house of God and call out on God. It's sad, but that's the only time God can get our attention. Thank God He did. Thank God you went through something to get here. I, I'm not Brother Justin. I'm I don't care how you got here. I'm just glad you got here. I don't care if it was death, I don't care if it was old. I don't care. Brother Sean, I don't care if it was your knee. I don't care. Whatever it was, I don't care if it was being drunk and about to divorce my wife, whatever it was that caused me to end up in the house of God. I'm just thankful. For Thank God. But it's sad that that's what it takes to wake up a nation, to wake up a church, to wake up a body. I ain't talking about just the nation, but it spawns and falls on the church of the living God. It didn't start in Washington, D.C. started in the church. Heard it a little bit this morning. Sin ain't sin no more. Sin ain't sin no more. There was a time that just missing church I thought I was going to hell. So boy, I, God, if that's what Corona had to do to get me back here, then get me back here. I sat under some pretty strict preaching for a while. And I was, now watch this, it's going to blow your mind. I'm glad we're live streaming and they can't hear it. If you were in leadership, you was going to be at church. I couldn't even miss prayer meeting. Thank God. You know what it taught me? This is what it taught me, to be faithful. He said, if you're in leadership and you're in this church, you will be. I ain't talking about during the pandemic. We're going to scratch 2020. Now, but I'm talking about as being faithful. I understand it. I, you, you're the one that I would figure to stay home. You know, and I'm not being ugly. She's not real old, but the older people who's at the time, people with health issues. I'd probably, if, I, if I had some of them situations, I'd probably stay home. There ain't nothing wrong with being smart and having wisdom and listening to live stream and do whatever. But healthy, like me, in good shape. What are you shaking your head no for? <laughs> Man, I'm like Paul. Woe is unto me if I don't preach the gospel. You see what I'm saying? I can't. And, and, you know, I thank God. I look back at that, Brother Hank. I thank God that I had a pastor that told me, said, you in leadership, you're going to be here. I'd be like, oh, uh, I might be out of time. Well, you're on vacation, I understand. Okay. Man, I, I just took a couple vacations a year because I didn't want to go to hell. But, you know, it's not about the work, but it is about the, if there's one thing he taught me, Sister Mary, was to be faithful. If we was going to have revival, he, he never had to call me, Brother David. We're going to have revival Sunday through Wednesday. Do you think in your busy schedule you might make it? Because he knew if no one else was going to be there, I was going to be there. 
Why? He taught me faithfulness. And then I found it in the scriptures that a man must be found faithful. And I thought, man, he's not just drilling me. He's teaching me. He's discipling me. How could you teach other people to be faithful if you're not faithful? I'm not even going to go there. I'm going to leave that alone. I feel the Spirit of the Lord said, if I'm going to get done, i got to get started. Someone said, did you just open it? And I'm just now opening it. Who are they? It's only been 30 minutes. Don't get upset. Who are they among all the gods of the country that delivered? Who, who's delivered any out of my hand? He said, man, ain't nobody. Ain't none of them other guys. Tupelo didn't make it. Southfield didn't make it. Guntown didn't make it. And Baldwin didn't make it. I overtook them all. What makes you think that your God is going to protect you from me? That's what he was saying. Shanika rib. <laughs> Thought he was going to do something. Listen, I'm going to skip down to verse 6 because i got to hurry. And Isaiah, now what happened was, I'm, I'm paraphrasing because I ain't got time to read it all, is, is Hezekiah sent some servants and said, y'all go to, to Isaiah. And here they come to Isaiah. And Isaiah said unto them, Thus say, shall you say unto your master, This saith the Lord, be not afraid. Of the words which thou hast heard, which with which the servant of the king of Assyria has blasphemed me. So Isaiah was saying, God said he blasphemed me. Don't you worry about it. I'm going to take care of it. And he said, Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor and shall return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. He said, I'm going to kill. I'll tell you something. Corona's going to die anyway. It was just a tool to wake up the world. If you go back to Genesis, you'll read, there was a time that people were told to stay in for the plagues were coming. This is the first time the world's been told. Daniel, we are blessed to know the God of gods and the King of kings. Listen, verse 10, it says, and I'm just, I'm skipping around. Go back and read. He said, Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God, in whom thou trust, deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Syria. So this is what's happening. Thus shall you speak unto Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God, in whom thou trust, deceive thee. Now this is going back to uh, Sennacherib of trying to put fear on the people. Saying that your God ain't going to deliver you. He ain't going to set you free. He said, saying Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. So we're not going to be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. I go back and read it again before I get all messed up. And whom thou trustest deceive thee, saying Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand. Listen to what it says in verse 14. And Hezekiah received the letter. Now, they, they, he done got a letter. This is what he does. And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Boy, wouldn't that be a good day? <laughs> I got a bad report. I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to help us. I got a bad report. What are you going to do with it? Lord, I got this bad report. I'm going to bring it in here to the altar of the house of the Lord, and I'm going to lay it before you. Lord, I'm in a financial struggle. I'm going to lay it before you. Lord, I'm bound by drugs. I'm going to lay it before you. Lord, I'm addicted. I'm going to lay it before you. God, I'm struggling. I'm going to lay it before you. God, I'm having this issue and that. I'm going to lay it before you. Can I tell you something? When you get to where you take your issues and you lay them before the Lord, say, God, I done read it. I know when you read it. I know when I read it, you read it. But God... I'm going to need you to do something about this. I'm going to need you to take care of me. Someone said, you don't demand. No, I'm not demanding, but I'm bringing my petition to God. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O God of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims, are, thou art the God, even thou alone. Of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see. And hear the words of Shanikarib, which has sent him to reproach 
the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria has destroyed the nations and their lands and have cast their gods into the fires. Now Hezekiah done got to praying. Hezekiah done brought in the letter. Hezekiah right here done switched the gear. Watch what he says. And, and has cast their gods into the fire, and they were no gods but the works of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they have destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord, our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of the hands that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. He done got excited. He done made up his mind. He might have took care of all of them, but they were gods made of wood. They were gods made of stone. They weren't the living God. Hezekiah started realizing, I'm serving the living God. I'm serving the true God. I'm going to learn to trust God more than men. I'm not even going to trust what the messenger said. I'm trusting God. Brother, if Corona could have killed you, it would have killed you. I'm, I'm going to go a step further. If the devil could have killed you, you'd already be dead. He's got to go to God and get permission. Can't even take you out unless he's got permission from God. Huh? Unless you do something foolish. You go jump. I've always said you jump from a semi truck, you're probably leaving. But God can even do that. <laughs> Woo! Oh, be careful, Brother David. You'll trip somebody out. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, that which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have. Do you know what we think? I know I've been preaching for 38 minutes. They got this thing uncovered for me now. You, you, you know, that, that's, that's, that's the way that he's... This is what we think, that God's put us on hold. We think we've prayed and God's put us on hold. He don't put us on a hold. God knows what's best for us. God knows what's important for us. That's why James said, you shouldn't pray, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. Man, I'm going to live to be uh, 90 like I do. I'm going to live to be 110. I just believe, glory to God, you got to put up with me for a while longer. But I'm going to do it. But I say, if the Lord wills, I'm going to be here. When he's ready for me, glory to God. I'm like the commercial. It's hard to stop a train. You'd have to watch an air conditioner commercial to get that. Oh, well, he calls me. Shoo. I heard a man say one time, I didn't understand it. It's been about 20 years ago. I said, I'd love to be here for the rapture. He said, not me. I thought, man, why wouldn't you want to be here for the rapture? He said, let me tell you something, son. I was a young Christian. That's what I'm telling you, it's been about 20 years ago. He said, there's going to be a lot of bad things happening before the rapture. He said, you're going to have to face a lot of stuff. He said, I hope I die for the rapture. Huh? Listen, man, you start getting older, you see all kinds of stuff. You start saying goodbye to kids and grandkids if you live too long. That's why I said after 80, it's just tribulations. Just, you know, it's just sad. Why you won't live that long? Huh? If I'm not going to be able to function, I don't want to be here at 90. My wife said, don't say that. I want you here as long as I'm here. Glory to God. I may not neither one of us be here then, but amen. I'm good with uh, three score and 1070, and then if by strength, 80. But after 80, nothing but miss. Why? Man, you'd be saying so long to a lot of friends, a lot of people. That's what hurts. It's hard to say goodbye to somebody. And I don't say goodbye. I say so long. But it's still, it's hard to say so long to your friends that once sat there or once sat there or once sat over there or once sat over there. When you're a pastor, that's like party. That's your children. I don't care if they're 90. I don't care if they're 100. That's your children. And that's the way you feel. So the only way you'd be able to understand it is if one of your children die. I can see it. I understand it. But I, I'm, not, I'm not concerned about, I know God's got me, and I, I'm closing now. That was your time to say amen. Because if not, it's only been 40 minutes, it might be. Amen. I'm trying to close. 
I was okay when you was hungry, but I'm getting hungry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not hungry. Listen to what it says in verse 32. Hezekiah, God's heard your prayers. Now, that's still over there in 20. And God said, you don't have to worry about it. He's going to take care of you. He didn't put you on. When you pray, God answers you. It just may not be the way you want it. Maybe your child's going, I, I prayed for my son, but maybe your son's going to have to go through something before God gets him back to where he is. And, and, and I know everybody else's children are just fine. They don't ever do nothing. It's just mine. Truth. It, there'll be people in the church, man, I can't believe your kid's acting a nut. Where's your kid? Is he in church? Huh? He's the one standing on the podium, man. Yeah, I, I seen him the other day. <laughs> you, <laughs> woo! You, you ever know? I, I, I understand, but this is what I'm saying. Everybody is, is, you know, look at you. Look at you. I'm like, look at you. It's a look at you's day, huh? <laughs> it's, it's, it's the truth be told, we're all messed up. We're all in this together. Together, we're fearless. Together, we're mighty. Together, we're strong. If we ever get to where we quit looking at you, 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 and just look to him and let him help us get back to the, whatever it takes. If it takes a pandemic, if it takes corona, praise God. You know what I told about my stepdad? He's 67 years old when he died, Brother Hank. This is it. I said, thank God for cancer. People say, how can you thank God for cancer? He was lost and without God. And he got saved. And someone said, oh, I don't know about that. Well, he lived a couple of years. He could have backslid if he wanted to. He lived a little while after it. I don't know how long, but he lived. But cancer caused him to look to Christ. It took the seed to cause him to look to see. It took cancer to cause him to call it. However, he got there. I don't care. I'm just glad he got there. My mother said the day that he died, I still remember it. She said she heard him in there and she said, do what? Did you say something? He said, I'm praying. What a way to leave. What a way to leave. In a year before that, how long it was, to have died would have been pitiful, Brother Butch. It would have been, you know, was he saved? I, he was a good man, but I, I never heard him talk about it. I doubt it. And then after he got saved, he had questions. He'd come and say, how do I know who's right? The Baptists say this. The Methodists say this. The Pentecostals say this. this say. I said, if they're preaching Jesus and him crucified, you can trust him, but make sure it's Jesus. Man. But at the end of his life, was better than the beginning, Sister Margaret. Because at the end of his eye, he knew God. He may have had cancer. But when he died, cancer died and he lived. That's the key. Because it had to have a living. No, I'm closed. 32. Sister Mary, 32 through 37 will be the rest of it if you want to write it. It says, Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there nor come before it with a shield, nor cast a bank against it. Think about that. There won't even be an arrow shot. He may have overtook all. He may have took Buffalo. He may have took Saltilla. He may have took Guntown. He may have took Bowen. But he didn't even shoot an arrow in the booble. God said, I'm going to take care of you. You ain't going to have to worry about it. By the way, he came by the into this city, saith the Lord. Listen. For I will defend this city. Can I tell you something? God will defend me. God will defend you. God will defend this church. We had a struggle for years, but one day God opened up my eyes. He said, don't spend another dime. I'll defend this church. God will defend us. Listen to what he said. By the way, he came that way he'll go. He said, for I will defend this city to save it for mine own sake and for the sake of the servant, my servant David's sake. Now listen to this. He said, and it came, I've been quoting this for the last two weeks, so you already know where I was going to end up. You know that I was going to preach it. And it came to pass that that night, <laughs> see, he got that God of wood. 
he cast it in a fire. He got that God of stone. He got them graven ninjas before, but son, Nicarib doesn't run up into the God of gods, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And this is what happened to him. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out. And smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and four score and five thousand. And that's 185,000 people. When they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. And then the uh, living translation said they were all dead bodies. Think about it. You're the king. You're running it, brother. But you can't, you, you king Seneca rib. And you get up like before all them nations you done wiped out and all them gods they had they had them gods them statues and, and them it says wood and stone and all they don't tell them what all they had and you destroyed every one of them and throwed them in by and burn them but now you don't run up into the king of kings and you get up in the morning like every morning and you go we about to take jerusalem and you look out across the holler so we in mississippi we call it holler and you see nothing but dead bodies. 185,000. Now listen, Hezekiah done been prophesied to. Said the way he comes, the way he'll go. You know what King Sennacherib did, don't you? He done snuck his last rib. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt in Nineveh. He headed right back to where he came from. He's like, whoa, did you see that? I'm just paraphrasing. I can only imagine what was on his mind. He will go look down and see 185,000 dead bodies. His army laying dead. He done flew back. He said, I'm headed back. to Nineveh. I'm getting out of here and headed back. He gets back, and I can't say these boys' names, so I'm just going to paraphrase it. And it came to pass as he was worshiping in the house of Nisroch. See, Nisroch was the wrong rock. He should have been serving the rock but he goes back to this rock his god he's worshiping this rock his god and a drumalak and shanuriel his son smote him with the sword and escaped and then it's got another one i ain't gonna say his name that's your radam his son reigned in his stead let me tell you something you could rule you can reign you can do whatever but when you run into the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, as they say, the buck stops here. Stand to your feet. What are you fearful of this morning? What's got you tormented? What's got you fearful? And, and I, I'm versus is real. Coronavirus is dangerous. But coronavirus is not God. As coronavirus yells at the gate and says, I'm going to wipe you out. I'm going to kill everybody. God said, he can't do nothing unless I allow it. Shanika Rib destroyed kingdom after kingdom after kingdom. The song song said, I'm when, it, when it looks like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you. Listen, we're surrounded by a host of angels. Remember when I was studying at my desk here a couple weeks ago and it came to me just as plain as day. Why are you concerned about coronavirus? I had it. He said, why, why would you be concerned? He said, one angel. That was plain to me last week. One angel wiped out 185,000 and they have authority over you unless God gives it. Don't you know sickness and disease has no authority over you? Unless God allows it. Some of us self with some of us things we do. I, I agree, but their scripture said, Who had sinned over this boy and said, Nobody. Some things are just that way. But I'm talking about the fear that's fallen on the church, the fear that's fallen on the nation, the fear that's fallen in the world. It's a fear. I know it's real, but I'm talking about fear is real. And and fear is mentioned 365 times in the Bible. One for every day. That sounds good. I don't know if that's why it's like that. But there's one for every day. Fear not. Fear not. Listen, we're, we're not to be as others because just like Hezekiah said, you know, he, he trusted in all them other things, but now 
trust in God. All the other people were trusted in God as it weren't real. But when you trust in the real, the true, and the living God, He's able to keep you. He's able to protect you. Sister Jamie, He's able to heal you. He's able to deliver us. He's able to set us free. He's able to take us from being a drunk and someone high and making us a dad, making us a husband, and making us somebody in the kingdom of God. Not that we're anything because we're nothing outside of Him, but God makes us who we are, Brother Shane. We're not what the enemy says about us. We're what God says about us. And today, whatever it is, I heard a message one time. Gerald Crabb preached it. What has run you into the cave? What's caused you to cower down? What's caused you to... Listen, I'll tell you something. You take this for a grain of salt. Coronavirus was a blessing in disguise. There is churches growing all over the world. There is people getting on fire for God. There's people that are worshiping and praising God that ain't worshiped God in years. And you know what happened? They took care of themselves all them years. And now they realized, just like I really, we can't do it. It's God. That's why when Shanika Rib said, who is the God that's going to take care of you? It's Jesus. When they ask you, who's going to take care of you? It's Jesus. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, the altars are open. If you're here today and you need prayer, the altars, if you need special prayer, I want you to come here. If you just need to pray, ain't nobody going to come jerk on Listen, I haven't told you before. Lord, help me if that's what it takes. If that's what it takes to get me back on my knees. If that's what it takes to get